Rev up your engines. Hey, Nickel says, Scotty, four years ago, Gum Out paid a few YouTubers to review Gum Out, which had PEA in it. Immediately, what was on a shelf was sold. No PA was to be found, not in any gum up product I could find. What do you think of this? I'm not a chemist. They claim that there's PEA in that cleaner. Chevron claimed it had in it. Now, the original one, as far as I know, was Chevron. It was pushing that they had the PEA cleaner. Now, I've talked to chemists, and PEA is a relatively expensive product. So they don't want to put a whole bunch in it because it costs them a lot of money. Originally, Chevron said how much PEA they had in their Tecron, and then later they dropped all that. And when people ask them, hey, uh, you know, how come you're not telling us? They said, well, we don't want to start a, a additive war where we have this much and another company says we have no more. Well, to me, that's a bunch of nonsense. I wish that they would have to say how much is in it, you know? I mean, you buy cereal, it tells you how much and how many calories are in each, each ingredient, right? Well, and those, they don't. So you really don't no, you really don't, yeah? and unless you're a chemist and take that stuff out and get it analyzed someone, you got to believe what they say, but luckily, you know, I really don't need fuel additives in a car anyways, there's already in the gas you buy, and if you take care of your car, and you don't go out and buy some old junker that nobody took care of, cleaner can help them, but if you maintain your car regularly, there's no reason you even need to put additives into your gasoline. Fury, ah, uh, Scotty, I have a Toyota. I always top up the engine oil almost every day, but there's no oil leaks and the car doesn't smoke. The engine performance is fine. What could be wrong? I'm assuming you got a reasonable amount of mileage on it. And as engines work, the main reasons they burn oil from age is the rubber valve seals on the intake, the rubber is going to deteriorate. So then every time the engine sucks in fuel, it sucks in a little bit of oil from the top of the engine and the piston rings. The piston rings wear going up and down for, you know, millions of times if it's got 100, 200, 300,000 miles on it, the rings wear. Then oil gets by and gets burnt. It's got to be burning it because if you're adding it, you don't see it leak anywhere, it's burning it. Check your spark plugs every once in a while, replace them when you have to. As long as it runs okay and you say it's running good, just keep adding oil and when the spark plugs do get carboned up, replace them. Hopefully you live in an area where they don't do a lot of emissions testing because if they do emissions testing, a lot of times they'll fail if they burn a lot of oil. Sharik Salute in my rear shocks are worn out in the back. They bounce like a rapper's car from the 90s. Can worn out rear shocks cause uneven wear on the tires? Well, of course they can. That's one of the main thing that does. The shock absorbers make, they absorb some of the shock on the car. They also hold the alignment correctly. And if they're really worn out, the car's going to be out of alignment. And if they're really, really worn out and they really bounce up and down like mad, then the tires are going to get contact, non-contact, contact, non-contact. Non when you hit big bumps, parts of the tire will wear, other parts of the tire won't wear. Of course, if they're really badly worn, it's going to affect it. Now, I mean, if you don't drive that many miles, it take a long time to wear the tires out. But if you do a lot of highway driving and stuff, you'd be better off to change those shocks right away. Otherwise, they're just going to wear out quicker, the tires are going to wear out quicker, and it's not all that safe bouncing around, but I've had customers drive cars like that in the city for years, and if they didn't care, they'd stay away from the giant potholes and just buy tires every once in a while. Cinnamon 31 S Scotty, my 99 Buick Regal shut off while I was driving on a highway. It did it three times. I have no idea what the problem is. They can shut off for many reasons. First thing you want to do is have the ignition control module tested on that thing. That's a known problem. They just shut off the electricity to the ignition system and they stop running. Just have that checked first. Now, it is a 99, so it is OBD2, and have a good mechanic like myself test it out because a lot of times it will trip a historical code that only mechanics can read, and it'll say this system broke down, and it'll show exactly what it is because it could also be your fuel pump losing pressure, different things. Have a mechanic check it first just to see if there's any historical codes. It doesn't take me five minutes to check that stuff out. But a lot of times it is the ignition control module on that particular model. Trevor Hughes says, Scotty, I have a code PO302 and cylinder number two misfire on a Vauxhall Corsa 1.2 in the UK. Could it be a fuel injector? Yes, it could. What a lot of people don't understand about misfires are, if a cylinder is misfiring, there can be a lot of reasons they misfire. It can be a bad spark plug a bad ignition coil, but it can also be a bad fuel injector, not spraying the fuel right. It can also be a bad computer, not firing the injector right. It can also be a blowing head gas, it can be a lot of things. So you have to test them all if you really want to find out why a car is misfiring. It's not as simple as some people may think. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.